crafters it's Jen Evers with quality crafts and welcome to number three of this into that in the last episode I showed you how to turn a blank piece of paper into this using an image and sparkly nail polish and I want to show you the project that I used this on because some people have been asking well what do I use this for so I created a card using this and the card that I made is going to be the next this into that so I'm going to show you how to turn this into that. Isn't that cool? It looks like they're recessed. They actually are recessed because I have it on pop dots. But then I added shading to make it look like it was even further recessed. Now for those of you who don't have a cameo and can't cut like this out in the center, um, use a circle die or a, I think it's called a protractor where you can just swing it around and mark your circle and cut it out or you can do what I'm going to do and I'm going to use these punches but they don't go as far into the page so this one won't look exactly the same so what you'll need are your piece of paper that you've already created this on any type of circle punches that you have or something to cut the circles out with and then a couple of markers in the color gray and some pop dots and then a place to put it. So let's get started. I'm going to put mine on a, a card craft card uh, craft colored card base today and I decided that I would like some blue behind mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it right on top and decide about how wide I want that to go around. So about that thickness and I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it and cut it right here. So after I eyeball that side then I put it back on and I see okay I've got a pretty good border around there. I'm going to eyeball this side about that wide and then make a cut and that's going to be where I put my flower onto that base. It's going to go, it's going to sit on here with the pop dots. Okay, and then after I do the pop dots and all that, then it'll go onto my base here, like that. Okay, so let's cut our circles. And it doesn't matter where you cut your circles, it's all just random. If you want to include more of the flower, you can. If you want to include more of the leaves, I'm going to do more of the leaves. So I'm going to cut one there. Make sure when you cut your circle that you don't lose this piece because we're putting it back in, remember. And then I'm going to cut maybe a smaller one on the top here. And then maybe a medium sized one up from the bottom, I think. And I'm going to just, I'm going to recess that flower, the whole flower. I like the rule of three, but you can cut as few or as many as you want. And this is how it's going to sit. So what I'm going to do now is just put my pop dot material on the back. I use my rolls of 3D tape. And if you follow me at all, you'll know that that's my preferred. I get it from up north. I get it really inexpensively where my sister lives up near Monaco and Woodruff. And it says it's removable, but I've never had a problem with it not staying in place. Although it is very forgiving. If I were to plop this down and decide, oh my gosh, I put it in the totally wrong place, I could pull it back up and move it. If ever I'm going to use it to um, do something like stick two pieces together or whatever and make it bigger, sometimes I will add a little bit of like hot glue just to make it more sturdy. And I'm going to peel all of these up and put this down. Because then the next thing we're going to do is glue down our circles and we're not going to pop dot those because we want them to be recessed. So I'm just trying to make an even border all the way around. You can put this up two layers of pop, pop dot if you want. That would make it look even more dramatic. 
And then all I do is I use, oops, excuse my blocks, they fall sometimes, uh, my, Aline, my Aline's Tacky Glue. And I put a little bit of that on the back here. I apologize for not having a list for you guys. I also use a bone folder at this point. You can use your finger or whatever kind of tool you have. I line it up so that everything matches exactly around it is where the picture matches there. And then all I do is I use my bone folder to go all the way around and push it down to make sure that it's not sticking to the upper level and to get a good adherence to the paper underneath. Okay, already you can see that it's starting to look a little bit recessed, but without that shadow you can tell that it's not quite as dramatic. And on to the next one. If your slides when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you put it back into place right away because it's Aline's. If you're using the same glue, dries pretty darn fast. And it doesn't come back up. So if you put it down in the wrong spot, oops. It's going to be an issue. I really hope that you guys are enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying making it. I really like showcasing different techniques and stuff. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out two of my markers. And... Actually, I'm going to do three, but you can do whatever colors of gray you have. I have a light, a medium, and a dark. Um, if you have Spectrum Noirs, it's uh, 1GB, 1G10, and 1G4. Or I. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a 1 or an I. must be an I. IG8, IG10, and IG4. And I'm just going to start with the, um, the lightest one, and I'm going to make... I'm just going to draw in, in between the petals, of course, because I don't want to cover up, cover those up, the beginnings of a gray outline. And you can extend it as far as you want. I'm going to do just like that, and I'm going to go around this part, too, on each one. And I'm just building up the color of this shadow. You can build it up as far as you want uh, until you're satisfied with the look of it. I hope that I was in frame. I'm sorry if I wasn't. I've noticed that when I use these I think it's going to be really dark and then see this one after it, it lightens up. It really lightens up. So then I'm going to take the next the next dark one and I'm going to go ahead and darken that even further. But not quite as far out as the light gray went. And I'm going to do that a little bit on each one of them. And then I'm going to go back with the lighter gray and potentially blend that out a little bit. Oops, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to remain in frame for you. Okay. And now I'm going back in with that lighter one, like I said, and just blending it out. Now, if you want a really light shadow and you are satisfied with the way it looks, you can totally keep it your way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend these two out. I really like the look of that. I might just leave it. No, I'll show you what I did with the last one. So then I went with my very last dark color and I just made one tiny pass around the edge to really make that stand out. 
just one really thin edging of the dark makes a big difference. You can use jet black if you don't have um, if you don't have these Spectrum Noirs or Copics or anything fancy. Just use a just use a gray marker and then a stark black marker. That'll totally work too. Okay, and that finishes it off. The only thing that you have left to do then is to put it on your card base and decorate it up. And I'm going to pull this one back in. What I did was I added some extra shading around the edge. I added some fun little blings to the center of my flowers and then some little tiny ones for that flower to make it really stand out. And then the inside I just put a couple of die cuts that I have and added some little dots and some more shading to make it all come together. Okay, so that was episode three and I showed you how to do a recessed look using your punches and the last technique that we showcased in number two. I hope you're enjoying it. If you do, thumbs up, share with a friend, subscribe, whatever makes you feel good, and keep on crafting. I'll see you next video.